Well, a lot of more excitement there in the top of the eighth. The Phillies go down with no runs, no hits, no errors, and none left on. Magley needs one more frame. We go to the last of the eighth inning, and uh, before we do, with a score five to nothing, let's hear a word from Ben. Well, here's a bit of advice for all you folks tune in on the ball game. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, if you really want to enjoy a great cigarette, you light up a lucky. You'd be relaxed about it, not like Sally Hemus, who really going wild in that Philadelphia dugout. You see, friends, Lucky's taste better. Every time you light up a Lucky, you'll get the better taste that comes from Lucky's fine, mild tobacco. Good tasting tobacco that's toasted. Yes, it's toasted to taste even better. Cleaner, fresher, and smoother. Right now, we're working our way up to a couple of minutes before 10 o'clock, and it's light up time. Have you tried a Lucky lately? But you'll say it's the best tasting cigarette you ever smoked. Well, the irate Mr. Sally Hemus has been chased from the ball game. Ted Kazansky takes over at second base as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Brooklyn five, Philadelphia nothing. But the story thus far has been that Sal Magley has gone through eight innings without giving up a hit. So don't you go away. Snyder coming up, and here's Jerry. Okay, Van. Duke steps in, takes the first pitch. Low inside, ball one. Jack Sanford working for the Phillies. He's the third pitcher. Meyer, Miller, and now Sanford. Five to nothing, Dodgers lead, last of the eighth. Snyder waits, swings on a curve, foul tips it for a strike. One and one to Duke. Hitting 284, 39 home runs, and 95 runs batted in. Snyder, this game was intentionally walked in the third and then uh, came in to score. When Lopata missed the throw from the pitch on a force try at the plate. Fastball high, and it's ball two. Two and one. Eddie Kazansky has replaced Hemus at second base. Hemus got the, uh, the thumb from umpire Donatelli after that violent discussion at first base. And Hemus really gave his helmet a drop kick toward that coaching box. 2-1 pitch on the way. Duke takes a fastball for a strike two. 2-2. Two -two. Well, if you got anything planned for the next 15 or 20 minutes, we suggest you stay right there with your ear in that radio because you can't tell. Sal needs three more outs. Here's the pitch to Duke. Low as he checked up ball three, three and two. Snyder, Robinson, and Amaros do up in this order in the last of the eighth. Dodgers trying to get a win here to pull back to within a half game of Milwaukee. Started the day at a half game behind. Milwaukee won this afternoon. The Dodgers trying to keep pace. Here's ball four to Snyder. The ball gets by Lopata, and here's Duke around first. Holds up now. He was running. And set to go for two in case Lopata was a little uh, tardy about getting after that ball. But as soon as Duke got to first, Jake Pittler gave him a slow up sign. So Duke is on with the base on balls. Ball four was a wild pitch that got by to the screen. And that's the third walk given up by Sanford in the second one that Snyder has received tonight. Robinson up has doubled, walked, and struck out, has scored one run. So the Dodgers now batting in the eighth. Check of the runner in the pitch. Robbie around the bunt takes high inside. Ball one. Infield shifting in looking for the bunt. Jones and Blaylock charging the plate. Smalley and Kazansky shifting to the right. One ball, no strikes. Bottom of the eighth inning. Dodgers five. Phillies nothing. Snyder at first. Let off with a walk. Pitch. Robbie around the bunt looks at a curve and it's 1 1. One ball, one strike. Well, if you wonder what the Dodgers' chances are, just figure it this way. If they don't lose a ball game, they can do no worse than tie because Milwaukee and Brooklyn are tied in the loss column, 60 losses apiece. 1-1 one, one pitch. Bunted on the first base side. Laylock comes in for it. His play goes back to Kazansky covering it first, and on the sacrifice, Snyder goes to second. So it's one out, 3-4 to four if you're scoring with us. And give Robinson the sacrifice in no time at bat. Amaros up has nothing for three. Sandy hitting 255, has 13 home runs and 54 runs batted in. On its second, Snyder. Dodgers playing for the insurance run. 5 nothing lead. Four hits for the Dodgers. Two in the second, one in the third, and one in the sixth. They got three runs in the second on two hits and an error. There was a walk also in the inning. They picked up two more in the third inning on one hit, one error, and a couple of walks. In fact, there were three. Two of them uh, helped in the story. Help set it up. Sanford stretches, delivers. 
Fly ball to center field. Well tagged. Backboard goes Ashburn. Has the range now under it. Now comes in as the wind gets it and makes the grab for the out. And Snyder stays at second. Ashburn kept uh, dashing back. And then the ball got up in the wind. And uh, Richie finally had to wind up coming in for it. Two away. Hodges at that. The wind, by the way, is in from uh, left center toward the plate. This afternoon, of course, Milwaukee beat Cincinnati 7-1. to one. And now post 91 victory, 60 losses. The Dodgers have 89 and 60 before this one started. Trying to make it 90 and 60. As we mentioned, they are even in the loss column before this game got underway. Hodges, one for one tonight, has walked twice, scored one run, and is hitting 262. Gill's been on a real batting rampage here lately. Stanford delivers a curve high, and it's ball one. Tomorrow afternoon, the Phillies and Robin Roberts against the Dodgers. And it'll be the final meeting of the year between these two. Right now, the series stands 12 and 8 in favor of the Dodgers. And then Thursday will be an off day. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, the Pirates. There's a call strike on a fastball. It's 1 1 now. One ball, one strike to Gill. At second base, Duke Snyder walked, moved up on a sacrifice. Sanford has been real stingy since he came on to pitch in the sixth inning. In fact, the Dodgers have only four hits. Five nothing score. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss on a curveball, changeup, and it's strike two, ball one. One and two on Gil Hodges. Bottom of the eighth inning. Snyder moving off second. Kazanski moves in toward him, but no play. Swing and a miss, and Hodges strikes out to retire the side. That's the first, the second strikeout for Sanford. And the Dodgers go down in the eighth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one left on. The end of eight innings, the score. The Dodgers five, the Phillies nothing, and here's a word from Ben. Well, there's no mistaking the big, powerful-looking Roy Campanello when he's crouched behind the plate. Class, that's the word for Campy. Just like there's no mistaking the brand of cigarettes that the great Brooklyn catcher smokes. And what is it? Lucky strike, of course. In Campy's own words, after any ball game, win or lose, luckies are my smoke every time. They taste better to me than any other cigarette I've come across. The minute I light up a lucky, I'm living. And a quote from Roy Campanella. So take the good advice of a great catcher. Next light up time, light up a lucky. You'll say it's the best tasting cigarette you ever smoked. And so it has come down to this on a coolish evening in New York, September the 25th, 1956. The Dodgers trying to cut the league-leading Milwaukee Braves lead to a half a game. And Sal Magley, the 39-year-old veteran who has bounced around in baseball, remember way back in the bitter days when he was in the Mexican League, back with the Giants, brilliant years there, then over to Cleveland, not getting much of a chance to work, coming back to Brooklyn in a startling purchase by the Dodgers and becoming one of the spearheads of their drives in this 1956 pennant race. And the 39-year-old veteran, as he warms up with Roy Campanella right now, is face-to-face -face with perhaps his finest hour in baseball. Magley, through eight innings, has given up no runs and no hits. And the Phillies have committed two errors. The Dodgers lead on five runs and four hits and no errors. So on a few occasions this year, they have looked to Magley. They look to him again. Jackie Robinson rubs up the ball, says the last few words of encouragement to him in this crowd of 15,204, all rooting for him now, lean forward and await the first pitch. Frankie Baumholtz will be coming up first, and so to the ninth inning, 5 nothing Brooklyn, Magley going to work, and back to Jerry. Ready to go, Frankie Baumholtz batting for Roy Smalley. Harvey Haddix is out on deck, indicating he'll bat for the pitcher Sanford. The manager, Mayo Smith, going with the left-hand batters against Magley. Sal, as Ben told you, three outs away from another history-making episode of his long baseball career. Curve is in for strike one. So we'll follow it closely and carefully for you here in the ninth inning. Magley has allowed just two base on balls, and one of those uh, runners, he raced on a double play ball just last inning in the eighth. Top of the ninth. Number 16, Frankie Baumholtz. Hitting 273, left-hand swinger. Magley into the windup, and down it comes. Pop-up, back of the plate. Campanella coming back toward the dugout. Back, 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 and makes the grab. Falls in the dugout. Great play by Campanella. Dale Mitchell came out of the dugout and held Campy. 
kept him from uh, going head over heels into the dugout. 5,000 lucky strikes for that play to our honor hospital, the VA hospital at Newington, Kentucky, uh, Connecticut, and uh, we'll give another 1,000 for that double play in the eighth inning. We forgot to give those out. Here is Harvey Haddix now batting for pitcher Jack Sanford. A great catch by Campanella who came to the dugout steps, leaned on top of the dugout, made the grab, and then got an assist from Dale Mitchell to keep from falling into the dugout. One in the ninth inning, left-hand batter Harvey Haddix up with Richie Ashburn on deck. Magley looks down now, and the crowd tenses. Here's the pitch. Curve for a strike. You can just feel the tension oozing out of this crowd now. And I imagine you at home feel the same way. Crowd cheering on every pitch. Pop-up foul back upstairs, and it's strike two. And we, of course, in our enthusiasm watching this, liable to get a little excited on a play. So we'll try to stay right with it. Reese rubs up the ball. Harvey Haddix, the pitcher, batting for Sanford. He's a left-hand swinger, one out in the ninth. The Bills, no runs, no hits. Through eight and one-third innings. Magley into the windup, and down it comes. Foul ball, straight back, into the wire, still strike two. 39-year-old Sal Magley walking around out behind the pitcher's mound. Let's Reese rub it up again. Seewee puts the good luck on it and fires it back to Sal. Not a soul has left this ballpark. Five to nothing. Dodgers lead. Top of the ninth. One out. Haddock's waits. Left-hand swinger. The pitch. Strike three. <laughs> Harvey Haddock had a swing and a miss. Two away, and Richie Ashburn comes out. The crowd is standing and cheering. What a moment. Sal Magley. Right at the top now. Two outs in the ninth inning. Robinson a third. Laying in close. To guard against the possibility of a bunt try by Ashburn. Two down in the ninth. Sal ready. Winds and fires. High with a curve. Ball one. In the inning, Baumholz fouled out to Campanella on a spectacular play at the Dodger dugout. Pinch hitter Harvey Haddix struck out swinging two away in the ninth inning. Here we go. The wind up and pitch. Curve strike. One and one. And Ashburn didn't like the call. Ashburn uh, wishes the bat vigorously at the dirt. He didn't like that last call. Figures that might have been a big, uh, big pitch for him. 2-0 instead of 1-1. One ball, one strike. Richie Ashburn up has popped up, grounded out, and slide to left. Sal Magley now. And can't you just imagine how Sal feels out there? He needs one more big out to gain another little niche of baseball immortality. Oh, I tell you. It's a real feeling. 1-1 one, one pitch on the way. Pop foul to the left. Robinson gives it a try, and it's in the stands, about four rows back. Robbie went to the railing and almost dived in to get that ball. One and two, the count on Richie Ashburn. And now, Sal is within one strike of getting that big out. Reese rubs it up again. If he gets Ashburn, you won't be able to hear us. All you'll be able to hear will be the roar of the crowd, I'm sure. They're standing up. One and two. Two outs from the ninth. Magley's pitch. Five ball foul to the left and out of play. Down in the stands again. And Robinson running over for that one, just wishing he had a string on it so he could pull it back into the field of play. Oh, boy. And again, Pee Wee rubs up the ball. Pee 
Sal rubs it up now. Ashburn steps out. One ball, two strikes. Two outs in the ninth. Fans going crazy. Here's the pitch. Hit him on the foot. And so Ashburn will take first. Hit by a pitch ball, and the game continues. Ashburn draws booze now. He was a little unhappy about being hit. And another left hand batter, Marv Blaylock, will come on. Time now as Magley, Reese, and Robinson have a brief talk. Robbie goes on back to third. So the tension breaks for a moment as Ashburn is walked and takes first. And Lucky Strike sending you all the action. Sal fires it over to Hodges now to let Gill rub it up. He asked Gill to put a little luck on it. Marv Blaylock has slide to left, grounded out to second, grounded out to first. Well, pull out that pack of luckies, light them up here, and just uh, lean back and let's see what happens now. Two down in the ninth, one on. Ashburn, the third base runner. Here's Magley out of a stretch, delivers. Foul ball off the bat as Blaylock tried to check his swing. Strike one. When he got that count down to one and two on Ashburn, lost are really going here. Fans started standing up and started way down in right field and then uh, just kept moving on up. Strike one count to Blaylock. Here's the stretch. The look to first to Ashburn. The pitch. A bouncing ball to second baseman. Gilliam up with it. Play to first. No hitter for Magley. <laughs> Sal Magley is being mobbed by his teammates, fans, everyone out of the stands after Sal Magley, the hero of Brooklyn who has done a tremendous job. A no-hitter for Sal Magley here against the Phillies as Mar Blaylock hit a routine ground ball at the second baseman Jim Gilliam. And you could just feel Gilliam squeeze that baseball and make an accurate, careful throw to Gil Hodges in time to get Blaylock and retire the side and end the ball game. And for Sal Magley, a 39-year-old veteran with a great comeback, the oldest pitcher to have a no-hitter since Cy Young in 1908, Got one at the age of 41, and for Sal, a great one. Well, Benny, that was quite a ball game and quite a finish. What have you got to say, boy? Well, Mr. Sal Magley certainly has had his ups and downs. You can remember that name way back when, when he and a pitcher by the name of Adrian Zabala first came to the New York Giants. Remember when they used to warm up in the bullpen, Magley and Zabala, and they were both ball players who are not too well known. Zabala eventually went out into obscurity, and Magley, for that matter, you remember, went down into the Mexican League. He and Georgie Hausman of the Giants, we remember, went down there a couple, along with a couple of other ball players. And Magley returned to the major leagues, and what a star he was for the New York Giants. One of the most feared pitchers in the National League, and certainly one of the great ones through the years starting of 1951. Magley, of course, constantly the Dodger beater. So many times he walked to the mound and made Brooklyn so sorrowful. But tonight, Magley has repaid all the grief and all the sorrow he has brought to the Brooklyn Borough. For tonight, he won a ball game the Dodgers felt they had to win. What is most important, and I imagine it is most important in Magley's mind right now, not so much the no-hitter, but first of all, they did cut the brave lead to the half a game. And I imagine Magley sitting downstairs right now can just sit back and glow for 39 years old, in a, well, a season for him that was remarkable. He was not doing too much for Cleveland, and the ball club purchased him. And I think when he was first purchased, you remember a mark saying, well, he'd have spot relief duty. He might start once every 10 days. But instead, it was the veteran Sal Magley who has been helping the Dodgers all year, ever since the day was purchased, to keep them in the pennant race. And tonight, as he walked out to the mound on a very cold evening, and from the sixth inning on, Magley was fighting not only the Phillies and his no-hitter and his shutout in the complete game, but he himself was fighting the cold wind that was blowing in from left field. And after the sixth inning, every time Magley went out to the mound, he kept pinwheeling his arms back and forth to try and loosen up those shoulder muscles. On so many occasions this year, remember Magley had made 24 other starts and completed only seven. On so many other occasions, Magley had stiffened up. And this was a night where you would expect 39-year-old Bones to begin to tighten up a bit, especially with that north wind right on his back throughout. 
But Magley just kept reaching back for more and more and eventually gave Brooklyn one of the big thrills of the year as he pitches the no-hitter against the Phillies. It was quite a night, one we'll long remember, this September the 25th, 1956. It was a big night, too, for our veterans of our honor hospital, the VA hospital at Newington, Connecticut, for we picked up 20,000 luckies for the no-hitter and 10,000 more luckies for the shutout. So altogether, 42,000 luckies to our honored veterans, the VA hospital at Newington, Connecticut. And so, hats off to Sal Magley, a great competitor in one of the brightest moments of a long career. Well, that just about wraps it up. We'll be back with a final recap in just a moment. But first, here's pretty Miss Dorothy Collins. 